Hello, it's Paul from DrawsGrid.com and I recently made a video with my top 5 reasons not to buy the DJI Mavic. So I had to follow with a bigger list of the reasons why I would want to buy the DJI Mavic. There's 23 of them, so let's start. The battery life of this drone is probably the most surprising element when I first saw the specs. It's ready to fly at 30 minutes maximum in perfect conditions and you'll probably get like 27 minutes of hover if you're lucky. But that's more than twice the amount that similar sized drones could have done so far. Drones like Unique Breeze or Dobby cost about the same, can do a bare minimum of 10 to 12 minutes. And that's a huge difference. Hell, even the Spark, which was a battery champion when it was released, for its size of course, is ready at 16 minutes, which is like half of what the Mavic Mini can do. Number 22, the weight. It is pretty obvious that the 249 grams was intentionally made so it goes under the limit to register your drone in the United States. However, nice side effect of that, that's absolutely great and probably one of the reasons why the drone flies for so long. Number 21, the sensor size. Although it's so tiny, it has the same sensor size as the Mavic Air, the Mavic Pro or the J-Spark. Number 20, great distance. This drone, although it's using Wi-Fi technology, can go up to 4 km or 2.5 miles. DJI has definitely made some improvements from the DJI Spark when it comes to connectivity. Number 19, the noise simply isn't as annoying as the Spark. The Spark isn't necessarily noisier than the others, but it does have that high-pitched noise that's quite annoying to people. Number 17, it's really fast for its size. Considering the motors are really small, so it drops the weight down, this drone can go about as fast as the Spark. It goes 47 km per hour compared to the 50 km of the Spark. That's fast enough to follow a car in motion or just reach the places you want faster. Number 16, it's a 4 on a wind resistance scale. And that means it can handle winds up to 29 km per hour, while the Spark is rated between 20 and 28. So it's actually better in winds than the Spark. I know I'm comparing it with the Spark a lot, but it's probably the closest thing to it considering it was the same price not long ago. But number 15 is the app latency. The Mavic Mini can do at most 240 milliseconds, while the Spark has a little bit more lag at 300 milliseconds. And number 14, one of the reasons that happens is because the Mavic Mini comes with a cable that connects from the controller to your phone, while the Spark you have to connect through Wi-Fi to your phone. That makes the connection of the Mavic Mini more reliable. Number 13. 4K photos. This tiny drone actually takes amazing 4K photos, and even though it doesn't shoot raw photos, the quality is way beyond beginner level. Number 14, quite impressive bitrate. The Mavic Mini records in 40 megabits per second, which is twice as much as the J-Spark. The bitrate basically refers to how much information the camera can process in a certain amount of time. So this basically means it has better details in the image. You can get a futuristic desk charger with lights. This simply looks awesome and I just want it. Number 12, the two-way charger that charges both your phone and three batteries at the same time. It's also quite slim and a good sleep for the three batteries. Speaking about batteries, number 11, it's a really nice thing that it still has smart batteries. That means that after some time they do discharge at a proper level so you can keep them for longer and they're overall much safer to carry around or bring in an airport. Number 10 is actually the price of these batteries. Considering you can fly for up to 30 minutes, you pay only $45 for one of these. If you compare that with the price of a battery that lasts about the same amount of time, the DJI Mavic 2 one, you can see it's quite the difference. So you can afford losing some batteries here and there. Number 9, it can actually fit in a pocket. Casey Neistat actually showed everybody that it can fit in a pocket, and it's true. I still remember Casey trying to fit <laughs> the first Mavic into his pocket and being so amazed about this size. Number 8, it's legal to fly in many countries besides the US. Being legal to fly in DJI's main market is quite nice, but that also means that it's legal to fly in most other countries. For example, I'm from Romania, where you have to register your drone if it's over 500 grams. Number 7. This is a great drone to fly with. Being so small, you can actually get it through the airport without people noticing it's an actual drone. It basically looks like a toy or a phone or something, and it's really easy to carry with you even without a backpack. This is the perfect backup drone. If you already have or plan to buy like a DJI Mavic 2 or a more professional drone, this is the perfect backup drone because it doesn't occupy a lot of space, it can shoot in 2.7K which is amazing and it's probably one of the resolutions that I shoot most of the time in even if I have the Mavic 2 and it's easy to take out and just fly. Number 4, the 3-axis gimbal. There were a few spoilers before the Mavic was released 
Pfeiffer didn't actually believe it might have a 3-axis gimbal. Because of that size, it's quite hard to make one since it takes 3 motors to make it work. And this makes it a much more stable video compared to the DJ Spark, especially when it comes to lateral movements. Number 3. An easy to put on gimbal cover. I know it's not a big deal, but I really have a hard time with the bigger Mavics. When it comes to the gimbal cover, me and Casey and I set apparently too. This one seems pretty easy to put on. Number 2. It can be safely flown inside. It doesn't have any obstacle avoidance besides the camera underneath, but it flies really stable indoors and you can get the fly more combo, comes with the 360 propeller protections and you can basically safely hit any walls inside your house without actually crashing the drone or damaging any propellers. And number 1. DJI Future Updates. Most of the problems that this drone has currently, like not being able to shoot raw, uh, the follow me function and stuff like that, are because of software limitations, not hardware. So if DJI decides to make an update to improve that or change the app to allow things like follow me, this could actually turn in the future into the perfect drone. I actually have compared it with the Mavic Mini and the DJI Spark in my article down below where I also put a complete spec comparison side by side in an infographic table where you can look at the advantages and disadvantages of each of them. Still undecided what to choose or have a specific budget? Go on the link at the top or the one in the description to check my top drones in each price category, from under $50 up to $1000 and more. However, if you're really specific about the specs you want on your drone, go and check the drones for sale tool that you can find over here or again in the description. There you can filter the drones by price, battery life, range, camera, gimbal stabilization and even by weight to see if you have to register the drone in your country or not. Don't forget to check the next recommended video for you right here, check the drones for sale tool right here or if you want you can subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and see you later alligator!